Hi YouTubers, it's George. I'm in the garage doing some work and I bought a couple of things recently and a few weeks back I bought myself a power supply and this week I bought myself a SWR power meter second hand uh, measures up to 200 watts 1.2 uh, meg up to 35 meg I think it is but that's not what I'm doing today I'm going to show you I also purchased all months and months back a signal generator and this is a signal generator it was very low cost it doesn't come with a case and it's an RF generator and it starts at 35 megahertz and it finishes at uh, 4 gigahertz signal generator a single chip device I think anyway um, when you get them you don't get a case and it runs from USB and this board is actually connected to that it's actually made in one board the problem with that is it's a real bugger to make a case for it because you really want these switches up there like that or like that and I worked out that you can actually cut this board off without upsetting the electronics if you're very very careful and that's what I did where that slot is there on that bottom board that's where I cut it down with a hacksaw and um, so the intention is to mount this up here and it only has two wires to this board I don't know if you can see the track there and the track there and then there's one on the other side so you'd think this switch bank would have more than two wires so you can actually get away with two flexible wires rather than having it the, the circuit board I'll put some photos of it now so you can see what I'm referring to now then making the case or a box for it I've cut a slot like that in, the, in this plastic sheet I've got and that's going to be for the display so that'll go through there like that and then for the keyboard I've put this down on a piece of wood and I've made a template like that so that is going to be where the switches are going to be and hopefully I've measured it accurately enough to be able to do this so that's the front of the box or case or whatever you want to call it that's going to be for that and that's going to be for that so that should go in quite nicely I've got to make up some spaces to space the um, the boards um, and uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to put some because it's going to be a plastic case I need to put some screening in the case and I've got some self adhesive glass fiber what's it it's self adhesive sheet it's copper strands no it's not I'll get it right in a minute it's fiberglass strands copper coated as a screening material it's a military spec material and uh, I'm going to put that on the reverse side so that will give it some screening properties now this is what the copper stuff looks like I don't even know if you can buy it anymore but you can solder it which is a strange thing and uh, that is going to be glued on the back of that to give a bit of screening for the electronics so here's the front of the unit and here's the back of the unit and um, how you get the holes you put a countersunk piece in on your drill to clear the holes and you get a finish like that which is quite nice 
despite my best effort of making a template for the switches or the switchboard let's turn it over quite a few of them don't align and it's not my necessarily my drilling well it could be but um, it's to do with the um, switches how they're mounted on the circuit board as well they're not all aligned <laughs> in a straight line which is a bit of a nuisance anyway it is working so I've just got to get some plastic to go in these holes for the push buttons and then do some marking but um, yeah yeah it's a lot uh, better than what it was having the two boards connected together there's only two wires as, as you can see and the push buttons all work so I've got something right but um, it's not an easy project okay what I've done is I found some bamboo stick that you probably put on plants and um, I made some buttons from a piece of bamboo to the front as a display I didn't quite get a straight line there but it's a lot better and more practical to have it like this uh, I've talked about the copper on the back I've got to trim that down as well and then I'll put a like a cable grip there so I don't pull these leads off the board and then I'll make a an adapter here or remove this connector and put a cable on it and have a socket more convenient than where it is and then I'll make um, a back box out of wood just to go around the back not very thick and um, I'll line it with the copper again and so it'll be like a piece of tester kit and um, I might actually put a battery inside or an old USB power bank in the back of it to give it some power and uh, things like that and mark up the numbers and the controls um, that's as much I'm going to do on this video um, it does work extremely well and uh, what I'll do in the description I'll put um, the manufacturer's information regarding this it's um, 35 to 4 gig and uh, you can get it to sweep up or sweep down in whatever increments you set on the control panel and uh, it's very simple to operate run some 5 volt so I think it's about 1 milliwatt output of RF and um, yeah quite pleased with it and uh, I've used it on my radio and I'm not sure at 200 megahertz set this to 200 megahertz set my radio to 200 megahertz and there's a one kilohertz difference between the two and i'm not sure if it's my radio off by one kilohertz or it's this off by one kilohertz but it's accurate enough for doing the testing i want to do and it was cheap enough i think it was under 20 pounds and um for a signal jet RF signal generator 34 megs up to 4 gig so thanks for watching please subscribe and like